Yeah, Scout Dog Handler, Airborne Training. My MSO was 11B, which is infantry. Mm-hmm. 11B, 40, PD, 6. Seems very specific. Well, it, it meant that I was trained as an infantryman, 11B. P, uh, 40 is the rank of a sergeant. PD is uh, scout dog, and then the other one was the uh, airborne. Okay. But what I'm, what I'm trying to ask is, how did they get you the dogs if you were jumping out of a plane? That happened later. When I went through airborne, yeah. when you finish scout dog school, you leave your dog. Oh, okay. I, I thought they'd let you keep a dog. No, because... You couldn't have dogs after 68 or 69 coming back from Southeast Asia because they would have two types of uh, diseases and they didn't want to infect the kennel. Hmm. So you didn't get a dog assigned to you until hmm. you actually got in country. Okay, so let me get this. You went from basic to AIT. AIT. To Scout Dog. To Airborne. All right, and then from Airborne. Well, this is where my plan sort of fell awry. Oh, your plan to get so much training that right. they wouldn't send you over. Then you decided to send me over. <laughs> <laughs> How'd that work out? <laughs> like, what was the reaction when you found out that your plan failed? Well, uh, the captain calls you in and basically tells you that, you know, I have your orders here, and you know. Then the uh, s s drill instructor or staff sergeant takes over, mm -hmm. and he calls out your name and where you're going. All right, mm -hmm. and everybody was, you know, and they do it alphabetically. So if you're going to Korea, mm -hmm. yay, yay, Germany, yay, yay, Vietnam. <laughs> but one thing did happen in uh, scout dog school I should tell you about <clears throat> it was Country Joe and the Fish had a song okay it's one two three four what am I fighting for I don't give a damn. Next stop is Vietnam. Five, six, seven, eight. Open up a pearly gate. Woohoo! We're all gonna die. <laughs> and this one guy was playing it in the barracks, very loud, right on loudspeaker. So the lieutenant got all miffed about it, right? Mm -hmm. And he went over there and basically, you know, shut him down. Well, one of the guys that was a platoon sergeant, young, all right, because it was still in training, so it wasn't, you know, the hardcore old professional soldiers. <coughs> he had taken a hit of acid. <laughs> and at evening roll call, all right, you got 200 guys standing. You know, in five platoons of 40. Okay. And he's at the front of one. Uh-huh. And all of a sudden, they're hearing Country Joe and the Fish in the background, right? Mm hmm And the lieutenant's going nuts all on it, and he's telling this guy to go that way. So this guy drops his drawers, right? Uh-huh. And starts masturbating. <laughs> in a direct defiance of... The lieutenant. <laughs> like right in front of him? <laughs> yeah. Did so, he ever, uh, I don't imagine he got the chance to talk to him again after that? Well, no, but he ended up getting uh, broke. He had his rank reduced to uh, an E1. Hmm. Which is like what? A private. private. Okay. All right, so 
now you're, you're screwed, you're going over, they're not going to just say, ah, screw it, there's no point, right? You're right, right. I mean, you know. No three-day passes or anything? At this well, point? no, I had a 30-day pass. Uh-huh. And that's where Rick Long <laughs> uh, offered to run over my foot with a Volkswagen. <laughs> <laughs> You know, basically maim me. So you wouldn't have to go. Right. But why, why did you just accept that? Because <laughs> it was my foot. All right, let, let me ask you, in retrospect now, would you rather have your foot run over or have gone? If you, if you could go back and make the choice again. I probably should have just gone to Canada. Like during your thirty day pass? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the, the foot that's still a no then. Yeah, I'm a coward. I don't like pain. <laughs> Alright, so your thirty day pass, you, you deny the so called chance at escape, basically. <laughs> um let me ask since you said about Canada, why didn't you go? Like I know why, but there are People are going to be reading this that don't understand that. Like, what was the penalty if you uh, had to run? Oh, you, you'd get thrown in jail if you were part of the military. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, they call that AWOL. They frown on that. <laughs> they frown on going AWOL? I wonder why. Yeah, they throw you in, you know, Leavenworth, Kansas for a couple of years. Hmm. You know anybody that ended up there? No. Oh, okay. Uh... So, basically, here we are. You go into the mountain now, right? Nam, whatever you want to call it. Plane ride over, anything? Plane or the boat or what? <coughs> you, uh, you reported, in my case, to Fort Dix, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And then they gather you all up again. Again, you're sitting around doing nothing, so you end up playing cards. So I learned how to play Pinochle. Pinochle? Yeah. It's, it's okay. Where, Go ahead. It's where you sit around and you play cards because you got nothing to do because you're just waiting for them to figure out which plane you're going to be on and yada, yada, yada. And what's interesting about it is they didn't use commercial airlines. Excuse me, they didn't use military, they used commercial airlines. <laughs> there are commercial flights going to Vietnam? Yeah, for the military. So you get on this flight to, you know, Delta or Northwest or whatever, all right, and it's like a 13 hour flight to Japan where you refuel, right? Now, why I'm in Fort Dix going to Japan, I don't understand. Seems to me the West Coast would have made much better sense. <laughs> but who might argue? <laughs> so then you, 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 know, you get on a plane and you then go in country and you report into uh, a receiving center for soldiers that are coming in. And the first thing they do they give you a toothbrush and a tube of toothpaste mm -hmm. that's got a lot of uh, fluoride in it. Fluoride in it, okay. And they make you brush your teeth and use the whole tube of fluoride. Oh. And they're very specific in what they want you to do, how they want you to take the toothbrush out of the plastic wrap, what to do with the cap, where to put it. You know, they had a pretty good... Uh, in Platoon, or was it Hamburger Hill? I think it was Hamburger Hill. They uh, had a pretty good uh, rendition of it that's damn accurate. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So why, did you, did you ever figure out the reason for using the entire tube of fluoride toothpaste? They didn't want you to get in a cabin. And they didn't want you to get any parasites from drinking water. So they wanted a lot of fluoride 
in your mouth. Mm. Okay. That was their thing. <laughs> so, uh, what do you remember what the flight you were on? Or was it Delta or was it uh, Northwest? Or no. Anything like anything at all happened on the plane ride? Anybody freak out or? No, I mean, it, you're just on an airplane for 13 friggin' hours. <laughs> It gets old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh... You, you sleep a lot. The refuel in Japan, nothing? No. Uh, I mean, they just get you out of the airplane, let you walk around, they fuel it back up, you get back on, and you continue on. How long is the jump from Japan to Saigon? Uh, I want to say a couple, three hours. Oh, okay. All right, so... Here's the one, when you, you stepped off the plane into Saigon, uh, anything like any shock? Of, oh. <laughs> it was like a heat wave. It was like 100 degrees, 110% humidity. Damn. It just, boom, it just hit you. Mm. And again, you get in the deuce and a half, the two and a half ton truck, and you leave from the airport and you're going to the receiving center for incoming troops. And the one thing I noticed is a little boy sign by a telephone pole just stops and takes a shit. <laughs> and there's no big deal. People just keep on trucking. You know, and it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's like, uh, the ghetto of Detroit, you know, is a good day <laughs> compared to that place. It's just, you know, third world country. All right. Um, so you got to the, uh, what, the base? Mm hmm All right. Uh, got my score right. They made you do it again? No, that's... Oh, okay, I, I see. <laughs> they made you do it again? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> got to the base, got your uh, fluoride intake. Yeah. How often they make you do that? Just the once? Just or? the once. Oh, okay. That's the last time they actually have control over you. <laughs> uh, were you divided up into a lot of stuff, a lot of uh, subgroups and stuff, or did they just tell yeah, you? Yeah, you got assigned, you know, to your unit. Uh, mine was advanced training, scout dog training, and it was done in Saigon. And that's like a, a two-week period, and then they cut the orders, so you go in and you try to find your dog, mm -hmm. right? That's supposed to leave with you and go to the new platoon. That's where a little problem came up. <laughs> I kept on going through dogs. And the, the, the most memorable one, his name was Chief. Mm -hmm. I named him Grief. You try to pet the dog on the head, he'd bite you. <laughs> Pat him on the, you know, the flank on the butt, he'd bite you. <laughs> Pat him on the chest, he'd bite you. <laughs> try to give him water, he'd bite you. <laughs> you ever hit him or anything or what? Like, did, what? I put a muzzle on him because he went after me once in the back with deuce and a half. I put a muzzle on him and put him in a choke like this straight up in the air and just... So the sergeant saw this, and he pulls me aside. Nice guy. He pulls me aside, and he says, you shouldn't be that mean to that dog. I said, he tries to bite me. What'd you do? I pat him on the head. Well, he's got shrap metal in his head. <laughs> you know, and I say, what? Yeah. He's got, you know, little frags up. Well, I, I patted him on the, you know, the butt. Yeah, he got shot there. <laughs> And I pat him on the chest. He got shot there, too. Come to find out, he had 13 kills. <laughs> and they were using him on training exercises. Only, you went from on leash, which was, you know, a five-foot leash, mm -hmm. to when you got to Vietnam, they wanted you to try to be able to progress so where you can throw a 100-pound German Shepherd off leash. <laughs>